Okay, this is called a really fast Ephesus experience with Dr. Barnes. And uh, I do have a PDF file with all of these pictures on them because I'm going to be going uh, pretty fast and I want you to be able to look at these uh, pictures at your leisure because uh, they're very good. Um, it took me forever to find these. Um, I did have notes on every one of these pictures, and I have looked, but I cannot find them. So uh, I don't know as much about these pictures as I would like, but uh, this is meant to inspire you, uh, to show you where the church thinks that John came from, uh, who wrote uh, the, the Gospel of John and the three epistles of John. And this is also where Paul walked. Uh, it's mentioned in, also in next week's writing in the Book of Acts which is why I'm posting it now. And also, I gave this presentation four or five years ago to a group of PhD students uh, as my part of a uh, archaeology course. I don't know what that is. It looks cool, though. I, no, those are, the, those are the Baths of Varius. Uh, Varius is the patron who had these baths built. Uh, this is a bigger picture. Um, and... Uh, that's where people went to uh, have a good time. It wasn't just bathing that was going on inside of these bathhouses. This is the Harbor Road. I'm going to highlight my mouse here. It's a little bitty mouse, but it'll do. You can see people walking on it. And uh, along the road, there were um, rows of columns on both sides with gods on top of them or uh, little deities. And same thing over here on the left in front of the theater. And then right here, where my mouse is, was an agora, which is a marketplace. And you can see that it's not entirely clear. There's not just grass there. There's also a whole bunch of ruins, a bunch of rocks. This is a uh, the big theater in Ephesus. There are two of them. I'll show you... Uh, Another time I'll show you this hill, and over here to the left, or to the right, uh, one of the two, there's another uh, smaller theater. And they estimate that whenever Paul was there, there was a city of about 300,000 people, which is a lot of people for an ancient city. And the, the way that they uh, figure that is, about that time, the theater could hold 30,000 people. And in order to... Uh, the way that people guess the size of cities is they multiply the uh, stadium for the theater by three. So, um, by ten, one of the two. 30,000 people, 300,000 total. Uh, you can figure it out. <laughs> and this is a, this looks like, uh, let's see if that's the big one or the small one. Looks like the big one to me. Uh, and there's the various baths that we saw a minute ago, and in front, you, in front of the um, odium or the the stadium, there is a uh, this columned road, and another road here. I don't know what that is. Now this is a view uh, going uh, from the larger stadium, going outward toward the harbor road. And um, in front here, this is where they would um, slaughter Christians for the entertainment of everybody out here, the 30,000 people. And um, the Agora is right here. There's another one on the other side of the road where people would trade. Now this is my favorite, I believe this is my favorite um, building in all of the ancient world. This is the Celsus Library, built in the second century. And uh, you can see on the first level, there are little votives for uh, deities. And uh, scholars would spend all of their days here. This is where I would be if I were an ancient emphasis in the second century. This is a baptismal uh, font. This is where you would go down in order to be uh, fully submerged, as the Baptists would say. Uh, this is a Church of Mary. Uh, of course, it's a lot older than Paul. I cannot remember which century it was built in, but it's much later than he is. 
But it's kind of cool to see where Christians used to get uh, baptized. And you can see really nice crosses here. And of course, they're reproductions. Okay, this is the Harbor Road. And you can see it goes right to the... Uh, everybody is going to the library up here. Uh, these are all tourists, and they're looking at the deity that's here. It could also be a patron. Uh, the patrons were erected on these columns beside deities. Patrons were people who uh, built the all of these things and uh, defended the city and all that kind of stuff. I don't know what these are, but they look cool. Oh, yes, I do. These, This, this is uh, the Ark or the Gate of uh, Hercules is what this is. And one of these two or both are uh, Hercules. <laughs> this is a latrine, and as you can tell, uh, things do not change with time. Uh, you know, she's reading the uh, magazine. And what they would have on the outside of the, of the latrine, or as you're walking in, you would get a stick uh, with a, a sponge on the end of it uh, to wipe with. And there was uh, one time there was a, a person who was uh, taken into slavery, and the philosopher Seneca says that he, uh, he choked himself. He was so desperate not to be a slave that he choked himself on one of these sponges to kill himself. So these little slots, of course, where they go, and they would have flowing, uh, running water to wash everything away. This is a uh, view from one of the roads, as you, as you can see down here in the, at the bottom of the page. And this is probably the Temple of Artemis. There's a line. And the line was probably a, a decoration of the temple. This is another view of the road. This is uh, could be the smaller stadium. I can't quite tell, but it looks a lot like the larger stadium with the stuff in front of it and uh, probably seats here. The grave of St. John. And this is where John is buried. Look at that. Um, not sure what this is, but I think we've seen it before. Probably the uh, fountain of uh, Tation. Another view of the stadium and uh, and the road. It's a tourist attraction, so there are plenty of. Uh, Plenty of different views. This is the this is again the baths. Uh, not sure what this is. There's another view of the uh, library. This is the aqueduct. This is how uh, the city got its water supply. Not sure where it came from, but it was. We do know. Uh, in my notes, I did have the uh, patron who built this. You know, we do know who built it. It's uh, carved on it somewhere, and it was discovered. Um, it was not. It was not there since uh, the time of the Romans. Uh, it has been, like everything else, it's been rebuilt. This is a part of the library. It would take me a while to read the Greek, so I'm not going to attempt it right now. This is a patroness of, uh, of the city. And you can see a uh, head covering. It can be either her hair or the veil here. This is a mosaic on uh, the floor of one of the houses that are preserved in Ephesus. And you can tell there are some original colors here. Uh, I cannot remember how they colored it, but it, the process is very uh, painstaking. But uh, you can just imagine how beautiful that would be on the floor of a wealthy person's house. Now, this is how you get to come up if you are a Greek god. Uh, they found this, and this is Asclepius, uh, the god, I believe the god of healing. Uh, they found him in the, uh, looks like the bottom of a well, and that's how it brought him up. 
and I believe the next slide shows you how he looks today. All polished and beautiful. See, that's the same guy. Looks like the same guy. These are... This is the brothel. Uh, a view from the brothel. And uh, we know it's a brothel because there's a, uh, there's a footprint uh, leading up into, into this place. And there are there was a little idol found there with a very large penis, so they believed that it was uh, part of a brothel. Uh, this is a, a obviously a, a really nice decoration on the outside of a building. This is a footprint I was telling you about, uh, and they found a similar one to this uh, somewhere else. And in Greek on the floor, it said. Uh, Come this way because you are thirsty. It's an advertisement for a bar. And this, they think, is an advertisement for a brothel. They want you to uh, go to the brothel. Spend a little money. Library, and then the arcs going into the forum. Don't know what that is. You can see the lights. Uh, Ephesus looks amazing. Uh, during the uh, nighttime, and you can make out a few of this, a few of these words. This is Caesaris and Mithrates, uh, Mithras, and Patronus for patron. And you have a year, uh, and you can see obviously they found these in little pieces and put them together. And I don't know how they figured out uh, where everything went on the building, but uh, those archaeologists are pretty amazing people. Uh, they're a lot smarter than I am. Here we have a coin for Ephesus. This is Ephesus down here at the bottom. This is the temple to Artemis, and this is Artemis herself uh, in the middle. I don't know what the sides are or the top, but this is obviously probably a uh, the decorations on the outside of the temple itself. But uh, that was uh, an ancient Roman coin. This is uh, part of a column. Wish I knew more about it. Another view of the city. This is the little god that I was telling you about. Uh, close up. And whenever I was giving my lecture, apparently people remembered this, and I got a couple of keychains whenever everyone got back from Ephesus. Uh, so I have some of those in my desk. If, uh, well, I'm not giving them away. But uh, this is a beautiful picture. Wish I could tell you more about it. It's so beautiful. You see, this is what I would do if I was in Ephesus. I would just be looking up at the library. And the, the point, whole point of this picture is to get the underside of uh, whatever this is, whatever artwork is here. Probably a lot of a lot of gods and patrons. This is a um, mural on the inside of a house, and it probably shows uh, something from uh, ancient Greek uh, mythology. And uh, you know, a lot of people imagine Rome as being just marble and uh, boring, but there was a lot of color and artwork on the inside of these homes. And whenever Christians moved into these homes, or there was a convert, and they had all kinds of uh, Roman and Greek myths painted all over the place, they, they left those pictures up there and just reinterpreted them as uh, Christian Bible stories. Like uh, Old Testament stories, like Jonah, would be a converted story from, from another myth and uh, they were so similar that they could just leave the paintings up and interpret it a different way. And so it's very difficult to pin down early Christian art and date when a period whenever Christians were in a place because they kept all of the ancient artwork up and just uh, reinterpreted them in a different way. And we know this because there's a lot of Christian art where they would have the same motif and just uh, rename everybody. Have a one of my professors did that. Here's another mosaic, just beautiful, down on the floor, 
and that almost looks like a heart right there and you can see on the inside of the house they have their paintings and then uh, in this atrium like area they have their uh, mosaic on the floor and there's probably a mosaic uh, in here as well that's been that's been lost or they're still reconstructing it uh, this doesn't look familiar to me but you can see all the color on the uh, well I'm colorblind actually I don't really know the depth of all, of all the color but uh, I see something here this all must be the inside of the terrace housing that the part of the city that's covered up uh, you can tell by the shadows here and also by the amazing condition of everything that 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 is uh, that's around this area and all of it is reconstructed except for probably some of the artwork you know you just have a standing wall this is the Agora where people went to trade again don't know who that is don't know who that is these are probably just patrons of the city this is a um, ossuary you know the James ossuary uh, caught a lot of uh, national attention a place where you uh, you go to be married this is a beautiful picture the outside looking in to the ark in the air the forum area with the arc the uh, Celsus library up here it's more of the same Agora, y'all know what that is. Now this is an inscription. I cannot remember what it is, and I can't make it out fast enough to be of use to you. This is the same picture that we saw earlier uh, with them going down to the Temple of Artemis. Now this is what I was talking about earlier with the uh, the beautiful inside of the terrace houses. Uh, this is a an ongoing project of restoration here and uh, they're evidently leaving this other terrace housing out uh, for uh, the weather and if I don't know if you watched the other video but I told you that down here by the road where my mouse is there's these little openings here and this is where the workshops would be and uh, you know people would the poor people would live down here and this is probably where Paul stayed whenever he was in Ephesus because he was a tent maker and as you go up, there's uh, more and more wealth until you get to the top of the hill. And as you know, water goes down. And uh, if, it, if there was ever a flood or, or a, a downpour, uh, the poor people down here would be the ones uh, paying the heaviest price. Some things never change. I can't tell from the angle what this is. Could be, it looks like uh, maybe baths. Now, this is a view of, uh, looks like the, a ter the terrace house, it looks like an angle. This could be a reverse angle from uh, the terrace houses. Uh, and you know what? I don't know what that is. I know it's Ephesus, I just, uh, my notes are gone. This is the stadia. This is where uh, people would be running around and uh, doing their chariot races and all that other stuff in Ephesus. And of course on the sides you have your seating. And it's a lot like what we do today. This is a church. You can see it's in the shape of a cross. Uh, this is either St. Mary's or St. John's Church. You know, we looked earlier at the baptistry of St. Mary's, and I don't see that in this picture. It would probably be right here. Uh, this is, this, you know what? I think it's St. Mary's. I just cannot see the, the baptistry area. It could be because of the angle. But uh, ancient churches built their, um, actually, baptistry is right there because of the, I recognize the, uh, the curved nature they would have. Uh, murals and stuff like that uh, of sea themes and they would do their uh, baptisms but the ar ancient architecture of the church would be in the shape of a cross you know you'd think the cross is kind of important in Christianity and uh, here's a road again 
Willie Nelson suddenly pops to mind. This is the ruins of the Agora. I used to know what this is, and I'll probably remember right whenever I uh, finish <laughs> the lecture. But you can see this person offering up uh, something. You know, this could be a... Uh, this is probably the temple for emperor worship. A, a view of the baths. Now, this is Artemis. You know, we remember whenever we're looking at that coin, this is what was in the center of the coin. Um, and these are all breasts here. And uh, you have the lions on, or dogs on either side of her. And uh, that's what was a central uh, deity in Ephesus. Now, you might recognize this good-looking guy. This is uh, Socrates, and he was found at, uh, in the ruins at Ephesus, and I believe it's first century. Uh, somebody kept this in their home. Uh, in about the, between the first and second century, uh, there was a renewal in interest in the Greek and Roman, uh, well, primarily the Greek philosophers. You know, we might think that uh, Plato and Aristotle were really popular during the ancient times, but really they were only known to scholars, and they weren't uh, popularized until there was sort of this great awakening in the first century where people would, um, they would want to talk about Socrates and Plato and Aristotle at, uh, at their uh, dinners, at their symposia. It was one form of entertainment. And uh, Socrates and Plato and Aristotle became uh, a lot more well-known in the ancient world because uh, of a kind of a renewed interest. Before that time, you know, they were unpopular. You know, they were considered dorks, basically. And they weren't included in popular discussion. And in the first century, you had uh, preachers going from town to town, basically preachers, uh, preaching the the Gospels of Socrates and Plato and Aristotle, and even Epicurus and the Cynics, and the, and it generated a lot of discussion. So this is a beautiful um, statue of Socrates. It gets better than that. Uh, this is a mural on the wall, one of the walls of, inside of one of those uh, beautiful. Uh, terrace houses, you know, like that slanted, covered-up thing. Uh, this is Socrates. He is in traditional uh, philosoph philosopher garb, and up here has his name, Socrates. And here, I believe, is part of the same mural with a woman uh, listening to uh, Socrates speak. So, I did my dissertation on uh, women uh, just like this, who were at the philosophical discussions at dinner. And uh, they were the hosts of these uh, discussions. And someone thought good enough about uh, this whole situation to uh, put his name up there and have a you know, poster of Socrates in your room. This is a picture that, that's really cool because it's looking up at the uh, roof of the terrace house. And you can see they get the beautiful murals on the inside of uh, the walls of these of the wealthy, wealthier uh, area, and you will have uh, this protective roof over all of these ruins. Now the cool thing about a lot of these houses is you know the water was running down, and a lot of these had um, fountains on in the inside of their homes. So they could uh, have, you know, they have fresh water and all the benefits of uh, the fountain without leaving the house. Okay, that's the end of uh, this little escapade through pictures of Ephesus. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, please contact me through my uh, Wayland email or through the questions forum on the website for, uh, for the course. Love to hear from you. And uh, everybody's doing very well. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. And as usual.
Take some of that shit down.